The top three causes of damage in home insurance claims are wind, fire, and water. But with a smart home, you can help prevent a lot of these. And your insurance company might even pay you for it. I'm going to show you the smart devices that keep my home safe from disaster and how you can use them in your smart home. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, wait. Welcome back to Future Smart Home. My name is Ben and this channel is all about simplifying your life with smart home technology. Today we're talking about damage to your home and how to avoid it. According to Bankrate, damage from wind and hail was 45% of all insurance claims, followed by fire at 23% and water damage at 20%. So let's talk about each of these and the smart devices you need to stay ahead. First, let's talk about water damage. Water damage is one of the easiest things for your smart home to prevent against. There are two ways to do this, leak sensors and a water shutoff valve. For the best setup, you should have both. Here we are in my basement, and this is where the main water line is for the house. In line with this water line, I've installed a Fin Plus smart water assistant and auto shutoff valve. Now what this device does is it measures the water that's going into your house right through this pipe, but it also can automatically turn off the water in case it detects a leak or you want to remotely turn off the water. This can be incredibly useful in a situation where the heat in your house has somehow gone out, you're not at home, but you want to turn off the water to prevent against any floods that might happen from a burst pipe. The Fin Plus is also amazing at detecting water leaks. I've actually had this happen twice in our house. What the Fin Plus does is every night it does a pressure check of your system. So it shuts off the valve and then it detects has the water changed in pressure at all over about five or 10 minutes. And both of those times, it actually alerted me to a very slow leak. It also does a great job of telling you whether there's a ton of water that's moving through your house at an unexpected rate. So if you're running a toilet overnight that wasn't supposed to be running, or in some cases when we take a long shower, sometimes I get an alert that tells me there's a large flow of water that's been going on for a long time. It is great to know and have that peace of mind that a system is watching and listening and ensuring that your house isn't gonna have a big water disaster. So here we are in the Fin app, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how it works. One of the things that's great is that a plumbing check runs every single day and you get the results of that on this screen here. And you can run a plumbing check at any given time. So if I was to do that, I could do a normal check up to six minutes, actually see that water running, that means somebody is using water in the house, which is, which is pretty cool. A normal check is six minutes, extended check up to 13 minutes. It's just different levels of sensitivity. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now because my wife would probably be asking me why uh, the water shut off. But you can see a couple really great things. You know, the pressure of the water, the temperature of the water, how many gallons are running at any given time. Uh, so those are super useful. This is where alerts usually happen. And this is something that happened actually yesterday. I was in the shower because as you may be able to tell, I'm a little bit sick. So I was using the water a lot at 3.37 in the morning, which isn't normal. And of course I got a notification about it, which is awesome because, you know, if something like that did happen, if a lot of water started to run in the middle of the night or you know, when we were gone, I'd want to have a notification about it. So this is really helpful to know, and it was great to see again that Fen continues to, to monitor all these sort of things. In addition to this, you can also get usage information so I can see, you know, how much water are we using uh, as a household on any given month and compare that over time. You can even look within a particular day. You can also pair your Fen smart water assistant with a water leak sensor. So they have their own, but I actually use the Acara moisture sensors. And I just did a whole video on my top three Acara devices, which I'll link somewhere here on the screen if you wanna go deep and check those out. But the way these work is if they detect water, I can tell the Fin shutoff system to automatically turn off the water at the house, which is a great way to just get ahead of any potential water leaks in your house. The Fin app could use some polish, but if you can tolerate some of the rough spots, the notification service is great. If you're using Home Assistant, there is a fantastic community add-on that I've linked below, and I use it to talk to my Fen device. I don't have personal experience with other systems like Flow by Moen or the Econet Bulldog Valve Robot, but I've put links to those in case you wanna check them out. And don't forget, check with your insurance provider. 
All I had to do was provide proof of receipt of the device and they started giving me a discount on my annual premium. Let's talk about fire damage. Once you're alerted, smart devices can make it easy for you or your family to get out of the house if there's an emergency. In our home, we have Nest Protect devices all over the house. New building codes in the US require a smoke alarm in every bedroom and on every floor of the house. So we have quite a few of these. The added benefit is these are great motion detectors and path lights that come on when they detect motion at night. They're really nice to have in a dark house and in an emergency. Google doesn't make integrations easy. So to connect these all into Home Assistant, I bought a device called a Starling Home Hub. This thing is amazing. I'll have to do a, a whole other video on the Starling device, but if you have Google or Nest smart home products and you wanna get them into Home Assistant, you have to buy one of these. Once you connect a Nest Protect to Home Assistant, when smoke or carbon monoxide are detected, it can trigger automations. For example, our home automatically unlocks all of our smart locks, turns on every light in the house, and sends me a critical notification. Just to show you really quickly how this looks in Home Assistant. The trigger is when the smoke and gas detectors are triggered to on. I have a group set up for all of our smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, so smoke and gas detectors. When that group, if any of them triggers to on for 15 seconds, that's considered, at least I consider that, uh, an effective trigger for this. So you can see this, that's the smoke and gas detector group from off to on, 15 seconds. Okay, so once that trigger happens, first thing I do, send a notification. This is a critical notification uh, that will alert, alert me that smoke or carbon monoxide is, uh, is detected. Honestly, it's a little bit excessive because Nest, Abode, and Home Assistant are all sending me notifications all at the same time. However, it's better to know. The next one is I unlock the side door, so you can see that here, which just makes it easier for our family to get out of the house. Uh, we look to see if the sun is below the horizon, which again will make sure that every single light in the house will turn on, which is this bright scene. We also have an abode security system with a 24 seven monitor that actually has an additional sensor that listens for smoke alarms. And that allows the monitoring service to know that a smoke alarm is happening in your house. They attempt to contact us. And if we aren't responsive for some reason, they'll call our local fire department. When it comes to fire, it never hurts to be prepared and smart homes are great at making sure you are prepared. The same principle applies to wind. There's not a lot you can do if a tree falls on your house, but it's important to at least know when there is a risk. Your local municipality likely has a way of sending critical notifications to your smartphone for things like tornadoes and hurricanes, but sometimes high winds are localized. In that case, consider a personal weather station, which can forecast upcoming high winds in your area and even trigger an audible alert on your smart displays if a particular wind threshold is reached. If you want to know more about smart weather stations, check out my recent video on my Tempest personal weather station linked somewhere here on the screen. Now I know some of you may say that none of this matters if your power goes out and you'd be right unless you have backup batteries to keep your internet and network running in an emergency, which is a topic for another day. We'll get there. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments how you're using your smart home to avoid disasters like these. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the future.